Uh, I'm Gordon Guyatt. I work clinically as a secondary care specialist in internal medicine. I'm with the departments of medicine and clinical epidemiology and biostatistics at McMaster University and work extensively in medical research and uh, education activities around evidence-based medicine. So uh, the New England Journal has just published a observational study uh, from uh, conducted in collaboration with the uh, NIH and AARP, uh, which looked at uh, coffee consumption uh, in a very large cohort of uh, Americans uh, who at enrollment were between 50 and 70 years of age. And what they discovered is that although uh, if you just looked at coffee and its association with mortality, there was an increase in deaths as, uh, associated with coffee consumption. The individuals who were coffee drinkers had all sorts of other exposures that increased mortality. In particular, uh, they tended to be lower socioeconomic status relative to the non-coffee drinkers and, uh, most important, tended to smoke much more than the non-coffee drinkers. Uh, after adjustment for, a statistical adjustment for those other factors which were associated with coffee drinking, there was actually a reduction in mortality, all-cause mortality, associated with coffee drinking. Um, that uh, was uh, also uh, associated with the amount of coffee you dr drank. Uh, we call that a dose response gradient, so that the bigger reductions in mortality were associated with larger amounts of coffee consumption. Uh, this seemed to be true across a wide range of causes of death, including stroke, heart disease, accidents, but not cancer deaths. Now, the big worry about coffee consumption, and indeed this was uh, shown in prior studies, a big worry about co co coffee consumption is that those who are sick tend to decrease or eliminate their coffee consumption. And let's, uh, I, I, I think there's no doubt that that is true. Um, so if you were, if the sick people uh, don't drink coffee and the healthy people do drink coffee, then you're going to see an association where coffee consumption appears to be beneficial. But the reason it's beneficial is that sick people tend not to drink coffee. And of course, it's being sick, not the decision not to drink coffee that is associated with the bad outcomes. And when they started this study, they knew that was the case, and that's been well demonstrated before. Um, in a famous study, for example, um, the investigators, uh, in retrospect somewhat foolishly, found that coffee consumption was associated with pancreatic cancer. And um, the uh, uh, reason was that their control group was pe with people with gastrointestinal problems. People with gastrointestinal problems like ulcers stop their coffee consumption, whereas the pancreatic carcinoma doesn't. And so there was an apparent association with pancreatic, assumption, uh, pancreatic cancer, which was really due to the people with ulcer disease not drinking coffee. So uh, uh, given that that was known in the past, they said, okay, we're in trouble if we start taking the people who are sick at the beginning, because those people probably, because they're ill, have, been, have cut down their coffee consumption. They'll have bad outcomes, and it'll make it look as if coffee were beneficial, when really it's because the sick people have reduced their coffee consumption. So, um, for a long period of time, we have known that uh, if you really want to establish causal uh, associations, it is very difficult to do so outside of the context of randomized control trials. In other words, uh, studies like the one that I've just described are what we call observational studies, where the exposure, in this case coffee consumption, is a choice of individuals. Uh, and the problem with any such studies is that it may not be the coffee drinking that lowers, that is truly responsible for the lower mortality, but things associated with coffee consumption or 
not coffee consumption. So, so a limitation of this study is that um, the coffee consumption was measured at a single point in time uh, at the beginning of the time frame that people would be followed. Um, uh, the uh, dietary reporting is always limited. But one would consider that uh, uh, if coffee consumption changed over time or if the reporting was accurate, that would typically uh, cause what we call random error, random misclassification. In other words, uh, people who reported high coffee consumption versus low, there may have been some inaccuracies in reporting and their coffee consumption even at the start might not be what reported. Further, they may change coffee consumption over time. However, you would expect that if, if there was any true association between coffee consumption and outcomes that that random error, misclassification at the start, or changes in coffee consumption over the time would attenuate or lower any associations. So it's definitely a limitation, but typically uh, logic would indicate that that would decrease any, uh, if there were tr a true underlying association, that the random misclassification of coffee consumption would reduce that association. Well, there was one of the many analyses that they did that suggested in men in particular that there was an association between an increase in cancer mortality, but it has exactly the same limitations as the cancer reducing mortality from a host of other conditions. Well, um, clearly um, the sort of database they're looking at, um, the hardest and most reliable outcome, the thing with, uh, I, with hopefully no measurement error, is whether you're dead or alive. And in these large observational databases, that's typically what you can rely on. Um, but um, uh, that obviously leaves a lot of things out. So a lot of other health problems could conceivably be associated with coffee and the investigators, given the database that they were looking at, wouldn't have that data available to them. So there may be all sorts of other problems uh, unrelated. Uh, I've said earlier that uh, there are grave limitations in this study in terms of establishing a causal connection between coffee and mortality, but there may also be non, lots of non-mortal, potentially adverse outcomes associated with coffee consumption that this sort of study simply cannot address.